Hello, my name is Samantha Schaefer, and I'm with the Department of Communication Studies. And I'm here today to tell you about my research in developing or development and the adoptee. So first, I want to give you a brief overview of what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about the impact of adoption on learning, um, the methodologies that I used, uh, theory and how that incorporates into our discussion, the impact of adoption on learning, what we can do, and the limitations of my research. So the topic or our topic. So adoptees access mental health resources at twice the rate, the rate of their adopted counterparts, which motivated my research. Why do adoptees then um, access these resources so much more often? Um, adoptees have a hard time adjusting in school um, because of trauma and relinquishment. They often have difficulties adjusting and the difficulty in adjusting often leads to this poor performance. And poor performance in school is related to increased suicide attempts, criminal behavior, and dependence on welfare programs, according to Berlin and Hirschen in 2011. So thinking about that initial um, orange blurb there, adoptees access mental health resources at twice the rate. Why does that happen? Is it because uh, possibly variables like schooling? Um, so I use the social learning theory and attachment theory to unpack the adoptee experience in schooling. So I use a literature review as my method. Um, I use two key theories, um, social learning theory, as well as attachment theory, to think about these adoption related issues and to kind of formulate a conclusion here. So social learning theory argues that individuals learn through social interactions. So learn by observing caregivers. Caregivers provide a blueprint for interaction. Um, and something I thought about in this is what about an adoptee or who doesn't have a reliable person to observe? So um, I myself am adopted and something I thought about is, well, what about a child who doesn't have a caregiver in the first couple months of their lives or years of their lives? Um, someone who to model uh, appropriate behaviors for them through social interaction. So what happens when that doesn't happen? Um, so Bandura 2002 and Wenger in 2018 formulated the social learning theory and kind of these concepts of self-efficacy and how we learn through our caregivers. And then I also use attachment theory to build off social learning theory. So attachments form through those social interactions. So attachment theory argues that our interpersonal interactions with caregivers teach us and our ability to trust other people. Um, so this comes from our need to be close to one another and it develops in very early stages of life from birth onward, you're developing attachment um, through your caregivers and through people around you. So what about adoptees who don't have that social learning and don't learn attachment? and develop insecure attachments. Um, these, are, these are my guiding questions in terms of kind of connecting the literature together and understanding these questions. Um, and then this was proposed by Bandura in 2002 and Bowlby in 1983. So both social learning theory and attachment theory outcomes are related to learning in the classroom. Um, I, I specifically look about at these adoption related issues through these theories in the classroom context because that's one of the outcomes that we can consider. So these two theories could be a starting point for our understanding of mental health struggles in adoptees. Um, so adoptees, exposure to neglect and maltreatment puts them at an increased risk for developing an insecure attachment and thus developing those learning difficulties that we mentioned earlier could possibly develop. And so Van Den Dries in uh, 2009 argued this point um, that that neglect can lead to learning outcomes or difficulties in learning. And then Brodinsky in 2011 argued that social support is a fundamental part of the adoptee's development, specifically because of the trauma that they have experienced. So taking um, both social learning theory and attachment theory and combining them, we can think about the role of the classroom in developing and nurturing the adoptee and how those learning outcomes might be different um, for the adoptee based on their lived experiences. So 
adoptees spend more time coping with abandonment and trauma than their counterparts, which makes it almost a distraction in the in, in the learning environment in a classroom. 55% um, of school related issues stem back to adoption related issues, according to uh, Hearn in 2011. So children who were adopted often had school related issues as well, more often than not. And individuals who develop insecure attachment are more likely to develop ADHD, so attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. They're more likely to become delinquent, have lower test scores, so actual classroom outcomes. You can see that it's reflected and they struggle to learn. This is through um, self-report, but Bergen and Bergen in 2009 found this, uh, that adoption is related to a whole bunch of issues. So insecure attachment and adoption are related to a whole bunch of learning outcomes or learning difficulties in the classroom. And so all of these things should be considered because when we don't account for them, it can create issues uh, for the adoptee. So what happens if we do nothing? Um, we're more likely to see adoptees attempt suicide and experience mental health struggles. Uh, SLAP in 2001 and Van Isadoran et al. in 2001 they both found that um, adoptees are experiencing heightened issues. Again, they're accessing mental health resources more often. They are more likely to attempt suicide. And so if we don't do anything in thinking about how their learning outcomes may differ, so um, again, because these learning outcomes are different, it can lead to things like suicide if we don't take them seriously, if we don't take the warning signs seriously. And adoptees who had insecure attachments in adulthood had difficulty responding to their children and forming healthy bonds in the future as well. So not only are there mental health related issues, if nothing is done, there's also relational aspects that can continue those mental health struggles. So schooling in the classroom is just one part of that. Uh, so what can we do? So adoptive parents can be a critical part in this discussion because they demonstrate social support. They can communicate openly about adoption in order to improve adoption related outcomes. Um, and this can be done uh, and seen in the classroom by individualizing a learning environments based on the adoptive parents communication with the teacher as well. So open communication can include honesty about uncertainty and encouragement of explore, exploratory, exploratory conversations. So Brodinsky in 2011 found that open communication is a really important part of developing those healthy connections and making sure that the adoptee doesn't experience issues later on in schooling and then in mental health later on. So the pre-adoption conditions did not matter as much as the post-adoptive conditions. So thinking about, it's not just that the adoptee is adopted that makes them prone to learning difficulties as well as mental health issues. Um, it's what happens after, it's the communication after that matters the most. So teachers can play a critical role in helping the adopted child adjust and form secure attachments and improve those learning outcomes. Um, again, Bergen and Bergen in 2009 found that uh, the teacher is a critical attachment figure for the child, especially an adoptee. Um, so considering how different role models in the child's life also impact them, we can uh, take this holistically and think about what can be done holistically to improve learning outcomes and thus improve mental health outcomes for the adoptee. So some limitations I had, um, this Research did not account for intersectionality. So people are not just adopted. They also might be black. They also might be gay. They might also uh, be a woman. So these things can also matter in terms of outcomes for the adoptee and mental health struggles. Um, there's a lot of responsibility placed on teachers here, I think, um, and sort of a lack of resources. So it's hard to put that burden on teachers as well to form those attachments. And also there's personal biases being an adoptee. I have personal biases in my research and my interests, but future research should do an empirical study on these relationships. So again, I just did a literature review and combined those understandings to kind of provide a picture of what mental health looks like in adoption. But this is just the beginning. And I think that there's so much more to be done on this and I have so much passion towards this. So I would love to continue it myself. Um, but with that being said, 
Um, I appreciate all of your time. We uh, we talked about social learning theory, attachment theory, um, how adoptees learn differently, what happens if we do nothing, and then the parent-teacher responsibility in this as well. So here are my references, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.